Stories from the heart of mid-Michigan. This is Fox 47 News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Mel Myers. First tonight at 5.30, Ethan Crumbly, the team charged in the Oxford High School shooting, was back in court today, this time to be arraigned in Oakland County Circuit Court. Crumbly faces a list of felonies, including terrorism and first-degree murder in the school shooting that left four students dead. Today, he entered another not guilty plea for those charges. His case is scheduled to be back in court next week. Michigan is pushing through a major influx of new COVID cases. And if you're driving around town, you might notice long lines, like the one at Frandor Center. This is where thousands of COVID-19 tests are collected each day. And some residents are waiting upwards of three hours to get swabbed. We've been arriving there at 5.30 in the morning to find up to 60 cars in line every morning, and it just doesn't stop all day long. Royce estimates that this location sees about a 1,000 cars come through each day. Unfortunately, some people have been waiting up to two and a half or three hours. As of Wednesday, Michigan reported well over 44,000 new cases of COVID-19 over the last three days, which is more than 14,000 new cases per day. Although there are wait times at Sparrow's Brandor testing location, there are others in the area. Lansing Urgent Care's eight locations offer rapid and PCR tests, and MSU offers testing at Spartan Stadium. So we're doing about 2,000 tests a day here at Sparrow. Um, I, I feel like that is the demand in our area, um, so hopefully we can get people the answer they need and we'll somehow come to an end to this. The wait time to get your results back from Sparrow is about 24 to 48 hours. As the Omicron variant continues to spread across the country, COVID hospitalizations hitting a new record in the U.S., topping 145,000, surpassing the record set last January. Hospitals experiencing staffing shortages as their employees are becoming infected, pushing an already overwhelmed system to the brink. The National Guard called in in some states like Massachusetts to help. This staffing shortage is the most serious we have ever seen. Hospitals canceling elective surgeries as they see ICU bed shortages and wait times of nearly 10 hours in the emergency room. Supplies for testing, supplies for treatments, supplies for hospital beds are declining. Meanwhile, many parents are left wondering what's best for their children and whether it's safe for schools to remain open as this surge continues. The CDC and Biden administration insisting schools can safely remain open if they follow proper safety guidelines. Some schools, though, seeing staffing shortages that are making that difficult. Have that backup plan for a possibility that your student may have to do remote learning for a short period. And in Chicago, staff and students are set to return to the classroom Wednesday, following a vote by the teachers union to return to remote learning, saying they were not prepared to deal with the latest surge in cases. It feels like parents are not being represented. It feels like um, the kids are, you know, an afterthought. Meanwhile, Pfizer says it could have a vaccine out by March that specifically targets the Omicron variant. In Atlanta, Jonathan Seri, Fox News. Let's take a look at our forecast now with Fox meteorologist Candace Monticelli. Candace, it's warmer out there today than it has been lately. But what we all want to know is, let's say that way. That's right, Elle. It definitely has been on the warmer side today. I call it our winter warmth, and we've been mainly dry. We do have more Arctic air ahead, so it's kind of a roller coaster as we go throughout this week. Today, though, has been mostly cloudy and mainly dry. You might have seen a very light snow flurry, maybe a sprinkle out there, but I think many of you stayed on the dry side. Our chances for any of these uh, sprinkles or flurries have been very light, very minimum at best and that's what the case will be this evening as well. Now temperatures have been in the mid 30s today. We'll drop back into the upper 20s due to that cloud cover. Kind of putting a cap, kind of putting a blanket on the atmosphere to hold in any of this warmth that we gain today. So that will keep us a little bit warmer in our overnight hours. So here's a look at maybe that straight flurry uh, left for the evening and early overnight time frame. Then tomorrow, mostly cloudy. We might see a stray flurry, but again, chances very, very minimum. Many of you will stay dry, quiet, and left with that cloud cover for your Thursday. So chances tomorrow, push your temperatures to the lower 30s. A little bit cooler, 
but this is still on the warm side. And this is actually very seasonal for this time of year. And it's all before the Arctic air starts to arrive on Friday. And we really feel it on Saturday. Even speaking of feeling it, our, our feel like temperatures of Friday, and especially Saturday, will be in the single digits, teens, and back in the negatives at some points. So uh, bundle up or prepare ahead, and hopefully you're enjoying temperatures in the 30s for the time being. Make it a great rest of your evening. For now, I'm meteorologist Candace Monticelli. Democrats and Republicans continue to fiercely debate voting rights legislation that is stalled in Congress. The president believes this election reform is so important, he supports changing the Senate rules to pass it. And Republicans are calling it a Democratic power grab. Fox's Lauren Blanchard has more from Washington. Senators could be facing a long weekend as Democrats work to pass voting rights legislation. I don't really want to delude anybody into thinking this is easy, um, but we're, we're trying to come to a place where 50 senators can support two bills. Senate Leader Chuck Schumer working to rally his chamber to pass voting rights like President Biden rallied Democrats on Tuesday. I believe the threat to our democracy is so grave and we must find a way to pass these voting rights bills. If senators won't pass the legislation, top Democrats say they must do away with the filibuster, a rule used to stall a vote and requires 60 senators for passage. The Democrats want to rig the rules of the Senate so they can force through a very radical, extreme, dangerous, and scary agenda. Republicans say the legislation gives Democrats an unfair advantage. The truth is this is not about voting rights, this is about a partisan political power grab, and uh, they're just trying to dress it up and, and sell it to something else. The problem for Democrats, Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, necessary votes say blowing up the filibuster will lead to more division. We need some good rule changes to make the place work better, but to get rid of the filibuster does make it work better. Leader Schumer says he wants either the voting legislation passed or the filibuster rules changed by MLK Day or sooner. On Capitol Hill, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. Prices for just about everything are rising at the fastest pace in decades. I cannot keep hybrid vehicles on my lot. The U.S. Consumer Price Inflation Index rose 7% over the past year before seasonal adjustments. That's the steepest climb in prices since June of 1982, according to data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Housing and gas, as well as used vehicles, were the biggest contributors to the December price hikes. When customers are coming in, they're expecting full retail price for their pre-owned vehicles, and those are some things that we're having to conquer. Food costs also went up slightly. The coronavirus pandemic impacted the global supply chain. The central bank now shifting to fight inflation after months of trying to prop up the economy. If we see inflation persisting, at high levels longer than expected and then then we will you know then we'll if we have to raise interest rates more over time we will but even though prices went through the roof last year they're still nowhere near the historic highs from the 1980s even with fed rate, rate hikes penciled in the unemployment rate will continue to decline this year and we should be back to full employment at the end of the year the biden administration optimistic that inflation will come down in the second half of the year we are not sitting on our hands idly by hoping that these forecasts are right. We're doing everything we can to ensure that's the outcome. In Washington, I'm Chris Wynn. I'm John Batteries. Used car prices keep going up and up and up, but wait till you find out how much you might get for your old car. That's story coming up.